Hello, hello. 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 How you doing, dude? Good, I just had to mute the stream. I was getting some slap back. <laughs> yeah, I know. It would be super awkward <laughs> to be able to like, yeah. hear yourself talk like three seconds later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, anyways, hey, how's it going? Uh, so, yeah, uh, thanks for the session. Um, quick intro. So I played from Wings Beta up until Heart of the Swarm, and then I pieced out and did Dota for a while. But now I'm coming back to StarCraft, and I'm at the D3. And I'm not being too serious about it obviously it's just for funsies i'm old um nice. but yeah just trying to just trying to figure out how to sort of tighten things up a little bit and zerg pvz has always been a, a sort of weakness of mine okay um and you know i tend to play very timid which i think is part of the problem um so lately i've been trying to be a little bit more aggressive but i'm still having trouble reading openings like hatch timings for the third and like how to pressure without over committing and still kind of macro behind it. Like I, I like playing macro stuff if I can. Um, so just, you know, the basics of kind of just structuring early game to set up for later. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so uh, did, did you bring a few replays with you today? For... I did. Okay, did. sure. Okay. Sounds good. We could check those out <clears throat> and I could give you some ideas on what to do. And then if, uh, if I see something that like, if let's just say your build, overall idea of your build looks like if it looks really off for whatever reason, mm -hmm. we could definitely make you a new one and make you something that will like flow really well for what you want to do. Uh, cool. I'll, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give you tips either way to get towards that. So cool. I guess all you got to do is if you're already on Battle.net, just go ahead and click your avatar on top right. Left click it. Yep. So it'll open your profile. Go to ladders on the left side. Yep. Same spot. Click it again for Grandmaster. And then scroll down to rank 86. Six, and that is me right there. You can send me a direct message. Go. Nice. I'll invite you to party. I'll make you leader so that you can uh, host up the replay. But before cool. you before you started though, make me the uh, lobby host once we're actually in the replay, so that I can okay. uh, control the timer and stuff. It's nice man. PVZ, huh? PV or is yeah. it rather ZVP. Yeah. <clears throat> Watch with others, and uh, so yeah. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So I have a few. Some of them are wins, but they're like ones I wasn't happy with. I think this one is definitely a loss. And, you know, it ends up me like losing my army to lurkers, so there's definitely some engagement issues as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think it's also just the timing of... Um, when I, when I'm pressuring and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So actually, let's pause it real, real quick here. Here, sure. real quick. So, I'm taking on the bigger maps. I'm not rallying for the p pylon probe. I'm usually getting one mineral cycle, and it usually gets me to about a hundred uh, right there at the right time. Is that <laughs> how you do it on the bigger maps, or should I just be doing rally? Uh, either way. I mean, if you want to, if you really want to do the. The fact that you mine the mineral and you grab it as soon as it turns it in and takes it off, and then you take it off, that's actually fine. But if even okay. if you uh, do the rally and then build your pylon, you're not really going to be supply blocked. Like, it's... Okay. Either way works fine. I usually just do the rally, but... Yeah, I mean, okay. It's, it's okay. Uh, if you, I would say this. This is how I would answer this, like, very, very specifically. It makes more sense to do it the way you're already doing it on a map that has a okay. lo longer distance to the natural wall. Yeah. So that's yeah, totally certainly fine. on like on like Death Aura and like uh, some of the smaller ones, I just do Rally because it's sure. usually in about enough time. Yeah, I have no problem with this. It's totally fine. It, I mean, as long cool. as your probe's not getting there and I being idle, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, but now, when you build the pylon, I would want you to stay here though. I don't actually want you. Yeah. To I, I, okay. I, I don't. I don't pylon scout. Okay. Good. I, uh, you know, I, I, I've seen people do hatch blocks. I'm just not comfortable with that so i just do uh, gate scout usually yeah okay that's good uh -huh. a little late go. on that gate it's okay it's, it was only by like a second i will say this though your wall is a little bit behind where i would think i, I would personally yeah, want it to be this map in particular i struggle with the wall in so all, that definitely all you got to do this is all you, this is the easiest way to look at how to how to wall on this map all you have to do okay. is the very first building you build it does not matter what side you build it on just build it in the diagonal section of the of the wall area. 
And right now you built it below the diagonal section, which is like, if your gateway was like up to the wood and right to one, it would then be in the diagonal section, if you know what I mean. Of like, like the, the choke point, uh, basically. So I should, so in this case, if I want the gateway to be on the same side, I should have the pylon, you said over one hex and up one hex? Yeah, just like, like up, like top right one, well, basically. Where that kind of Z character is, roughly? Yeah. Uh, and then like your gateway... Like when you watch the VOD, it would be like like you'll you'll be able to see this in the VOD too, because uh, you'll see mm -hmm. my perspective. But like your gateway should be like just a little bit top right of where it is right now, and your pylon mm -hmm. could be exact same thing as well, a little bit top right of where it is right now, and then you'd be good to go. Cool. And, th cool. and then all you got to do from there, all you have to do from there to make it a perfect wall, is then uh, put overlap of your gateway, like your your core to your gateway. So it's it's mm -hmm. like you, it's not like quarter to quarter because then the links could squeeze through. It's like at mm -hmm. least like a one pixel overlap, but then you space it by one in terms of like up and down, so that a zealot gotcha. could sit in the door. And if you just do that every time, you can then connect your final building on the other side of the core, and it will always be a perfect wall, and it won't be fucked up. But your wall right now gotcha. is very spacious. Yes, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, being problematic. I don't think it comes into play. I forget. But yeah. yeah, it's just yeah, like it's it's gonna uh, the, yeah, the one no, thing that's kind of scary. Have, well, the, the, yeah. the, the, or go, go ahead, you go. I was going to say, though, yeah, I, I kind of know I need to spend some, some, like, some AI games just practicing my wall off just to get it, like, down tight. I sure, think sure. That's, the, that's something I need to spend some time on. The only, the last thing I would say that's important mm -hmm. here is even if you can actually connect the wall, let's just say you're like, well, it's not that big of a deal because I actually got my wall connected to the other wall and it still works. The last thing mm -hmm. you want to do, though, is you, you do not want to have shitloads of surface area on your core. Because you have to connect the, the wall by having your core be super exposed. Because then your core is very susceptible uh, to, like, run buys and shit early. It could just yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, is, that is the problem I've been having. So, uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Good shit. Uh, your gas, I would say, is a, ta a little bit late. Uh, okay. That one actually does I've been matter. Doing, but, yeah. I've been doing rally. Because what I do is I rally the pylon or the probe to their build and then rally back. And now I'm at 16. And now I'm going to rally into the gas again. Yeah. I've been I, trying to do that technique. I would say, uh, just in general, uh, mm -hmm. start like the second you make a gateway, immediately have a probe mm -hmm. started as well. You can then like, chrono boost the probe, but then also right before, if you actually build a gas right before the probe pops out, you can afford actually to build a gas and just barely build a probe too at the same time to not lose okay. your chrono boost, but also have a gas mm -hmm. started right away because uh, your your first gas definitely is going to be a big deal here because it's like your initial tech that whatever you're throwing down yeah. beyond the core. Yeah. So where are we looking right now? Where are you looking right uh, now? Is there yeah. a way to follow your camera? There is, unfortunately. Or, uh, I'll, I'll always make it you obvious, or make it obvious as to where I'm looking. I was just kind of looking at your gas, seeing it. It's, it's okay. like, you basically, it's like one gas round, which is, it's not the end of the world. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's all good. Uh, so, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna look at your scouting here in a second, and I'm going to see what you see mm -hmm. and see how you react. But your build overall should be going into a, uh, a nexus now, and then a core, ideally. Yeah, I think I go on this map, if I see, if I see the... Generally, if I see the, the, the hatch on the low ground, I feel comfortable doing Nexus into core as opposed to like core into Nexus okay, for yeah. any reason. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, I would say yeah, if you definitely saw like early league pressure, then yeah, definitely go, go Nexus right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I will say this though. Your second gas probe should actually be going down to your Nash right now. So you, what you want to do is you want to rally your when you're at 19 supply, rally your Nexus to your natural and then let the probe pop out. And when you build probe that's uh, okay. 20, then you do it and, and back into the gas. Okay, I'm one. I'm one behind. Gotcha, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, because now you're going to be like 500 minerals by the time you actually get me down to your natural to build shit. Understood. Yep. I usually do. I think that might have just been a mistake, but yeah, I definitely try to get 19 or 20 nexus with the 19th probe. Yeah. So you know, I know I don't do a lot of <laughs> micro shenanigans when I'm scouting. Like I'm not like one of these guys that's harassing on the mineral line. Yeah, just, I don't have the cycles for that. You uh, definitely so. shouldn't be. Honestly, I would even say you shouldn't even do that even if you're masters league. Because people yeah. all, will always like, oh, I pylon blocked myself. I didn't build the second pylon. I didn't build my other gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to build probes for a second. Yeah, basically I'm looking for a second gas here, and then I go, okay, I'm going to go to a third location to see when a third happens. Yeah. It's sort of my mentality with yeah, yeah. my initial probe. All right, I'm going to pause it one more time. and just I'm going to talk about your wall one more time, but I know we, we already talked about yeah. it. But mm -hmm. like whenever you do shit like this, where you build both edges of the wall first, it makes it so much harder to connect it properly. And I can, right now, your okay. wall looks like it'll just be fucked, at like to a degree. Yeah. Like there's it, it a chance that like it might have a one pixel gap. I think it might, but it it's so wide 
Uh, I do mm -hmm. like that your core is actually somehow tucked back there, but uh, if you just do the one pixel gap between your first two buildings and then add in the third where the core is now, basically, mm -hmm. it's it, you'll never have a fucked up wall ever. It's always 100% okay. guarantee that your wall will always not be shit. But yeah, it's it's just hard. It, like it, it's random that your wall is going to be good or bad now if it, you build on both sides. Cause yeah, that's. I mean, harder. I definitely struggle with that when I face twelve pools. So there's there's opportunity to to improve on that for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I would say, uh, honestly, off of your scout, I would uh, literally. I would. I'm gonna pause and say, talk about this one more time. Yeah. I would say, or let me ask you, uh, what is your general opener gonna be? I guess, like, if you could remember. Him. Lately, I've been doing like. Uh, uh, council into three gate adept pressure without being too all in sure. with it. Okay. And then I'm trying to, like, because I've tried Stargate and I don't feel comfortable. I don't think I have the cycles to do that juggling just for my, my level right now. Sure. And then, um, so yeah, usually what I do is I, I try to pressure it if I can get drones, or if I see a lot of units, I also kind of consider that a win yeah and then i just kind of get out and like try to defend a third is my okay. general that's good uh, I, I like it that's good that's good um i would say if you're gonna move your depths across the map as well uh i honestly mm -hmm. i would say there's no reason to keep your probe across just because this mm -hmm. probe is pretty crucial right now for your economy and it's, it's we have very few probes at this point so mm -hmm. that probe is massive uh and if you're gonna scout bring you, back yeah yeah, you're yeah if you're gonna scout with the adept anyways there's no reason to leave them there the only reason why I, I, why I would ever say leave the probe there is if you're not going to build a sentry for whatever reason. Like, you're going to do, let's say, like a DT drop or some shit, and you're mm -hmm. like, I want to make sure I'm not going to die. And I think it would make sense for that. Or if you're not going to do any type... Any, if you're not going to do any type of an adept harass, I think it would make mm -hmm. sense again. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. And I think this was an example of me being wondering if it was considered a late third or not by the Zerg. You know, at this level, you know, I think 230 is usually, like, the, the rough ballpark I hear about sure. for a third. Yeah. Uh, like, but like, but I don't know if a person's just bad or if they're just late. You know, sometimes there's a. Like, the, so I see the lings here, and yeah. I'm like, okay, and I'm like. So I, I'm that. So obviously, I can go back later and see. Uh, he, he does take the third, but like 245. I guess that's just, you know, less efficient. I guess you would say. But I, I'm always. It's one thing I'm struggling with lately is like, okay, between that initial probe, seeing the third hatch to like what is considered late because I've I definitely my level you see people trying to do wacky stuff where it's like a little bit later of a third but an earlier layer and you're like I don't know what that means yeah yeah so <clears throat> just know uh, mm -hmm. like like roughly like, 233 is not a bad call uh, anything around mm -hmm. there is okay if, if a Zerg takes like a 245 third or something like that it will be mm -hmm. a little bit late on the third but it probably means they're going for maybe they're not state they're not taking their drones off of gas could be one thing so they could be doing mm. something with gas, or like that's beyond zergling speed, or that also could mean they're making queens heavier than normal. They might be going mm -hmm. for more like creep spread or some shit like that, uh, mm -hmm. or they're just really going hardcore and spinning their larva. Because usually, if you do take like a two thirty third, you do have like two larvae sitting at your hatcheries, or like three larvae sitting there as you take the hatchery. Gotcha. So it doesn't have to be exactly two thirty, but yeah, like right around there, around when the zerg is like thirty ish supply is when they should be going for the third base if their build is standard, which is I buy gas for speed, I take drones off gas after I get speed, and then I just make drones. So in this case, this this person's just droning heavily, which is why it's a little bit later than like the 230 roughly. Yeah. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll see like when your, your adept gets here and see what you see in a second. Mm. Uh, all right, we'll speed it up. Those. All right, so also keep in mind too, this is a tip for adepts, okay? Mm -hmm. Whenever you engage something with an adept, no matter what it is, I don't give a shit if it's like a drone, if it's a queen, if it's a zergling, whatever. Mm -hmm. Always cast the shade the second you initiate combat. Okay. So the fact just that you, to, to have that duking ability. Yeah, sort of. like it gives you options and it also gives you a scout. Because mm -hmm. if your adept okay. would have just died somehow right there. Uh, yeah, I'm blind. Exactly. Yeah. That was like a wasted opportunity to scout his third. Um, and then as well, if you think about it like this. Let's just say that he actually has, like, uh, the third, and it's, like, you know, uh, you know, it's there, and you go beyond it, and let's say now you go towards, like, the natural, maybe, like, a creep tumor is there you could snipe, or... Mm -hmm. op it creates opportunity, basically. Like, you might be able to kill a drone, you might be able to kill a creep tumor, other shit somewhere else that's more defenseless. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, just, I would say, just really get out of the habit of taking combat with adepts and not actually casting a shade. Like, that's something everybody does. 
and you never mm -hmm. want to do that ever. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. So the fact that he has a third is good. This already yeah. kind of rules out, like th that looks somewhat normal. It kind of rules out the fact that oh, he's going crazy gas. Like, mm -hmm. it it still it still could happen. Like he still might go like one gas roach or something like that. But what I mean is, is it kind of rules out builds where he's going to go for like four gas early. So something that, like I bet you don't run into this very often because it's not really super common in PVZ. But something like, for instance, like a two base mutalisk rush or like a fucking. Yeah, I had that yesterday actually. I, it was okay. a person I, and I, I scouted with hallucinations and I was like, oh, I see four gases. It ended up being a bit of a shit show of a game. But sure. yeah, it was one of those like, I eventually got it with enough archons and nice. high templars. So. Nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, it's. When someone invested in like extra economy like this, like extra mineral costs early like this, you probably assume they're not going crazy, crazy gas. So you mm -hmm. should be okay. Uh, so now, actually, let's 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 pause it here and talk about my initial gateway units. I'm sure that I might have been able to squeeze another one in, possibly here, but like, so I did. I just did like adept, adept, adept. So just to crank out enough adepts to have that early pressure before um, warp gate and uh, warp prism are finished. Uh -huh. So should I? You mentioned a sentry earlier, so that should always be part of my initial That's opening. That's more, more for standard play. It's a lot. So, so here's the thing: your build. I will say this: your build will die. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm looking at your build right now, it will totally die to all ends. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if th th this Zerg, what he could do, there's something that is very capable of what he could do, is he could actually have st not stop money gas uh, for the reason why the third could have been a little delayed, just a little bit, off of one gas. Not, we're talk talking about four gas, we're talking about just one gas. And he could have mm -hmm. gone for a Roach Horde. And he could have just mm -hmm. stopped making links at maybe like 22 drones or something well, like we, that. Well, we do actually have a Roach Horde going down, right? But you mean an earlier Roach Horde? Yeah, we're talking about like a, literally like a Roach Ravager Zergling all in. Gotcha, gotcha, like gotcha. maybe like two ravagers with like maybe five roaches and just like full mm -hmm. on speed link flood. Mm -hmm. uh, that could totally be happening right now. And the fact that you don't have a sentry or a battery, you could totally die. Uh, the battery is usually I'm better about, but yeah, the, agreed. Uh, <coughs> but so I mean, I would definitely prefer to tailor my opening to be a bit more uh, cautious and yeah. a bit more. Well, Pragmatic. with if the fact that you're doing an adept glaive timing, I, I would say you could get by without a sentry as long as you have a battery. So just so mm -hmm. if, if you like a battery is almost like required, basically just one. And the time mm -hmm. when you should take your battery is right around the time when you start your like council. That's when you should start a battery because if a Zerg does want all of you, they're going to be attacking you by the time the battery is done if you start it then. So okay. your battery should the battery be account at the same time. Yeah. Cool. Like, whatever tech you make, your first tech you make should be paired with a, kill, with a battery. Okay. Cool. Makes sense. Uh, and then, uh, if you had that, the fact that you're going for glaives and you're making just a lot of adepts, the best thing you could do then, if you got, if you actually did get all in then, would be whatever whatever kind of all in it is, maybe start making something that would be good against it. If it's just pure mm -hmm. links, you could get by with just more adepts, that'd be fine. If it's uh, mm -hmm. if it's like anything with Baneling or or Roach based, like anything gas based, I would say mm -hmm. maybe add in if you can. Maybe try to add in a Sentry or add in Stalkers. The reason why Stalkers are good there is because if you can actually have a, this is also why maybe if you want to be really safe, maybe open just one Stalker first, always, for two reasons. Yeah, I, yeah, I've been thinking about doing that just because I can I can shrug away that initial Overlord. That's that's one reason like... why. That's what's one reason. But mm -hmm. the other the other reason why is because. Uh, if you have a stalker in your door instead of an adept, bailing all ends are a joke. A stalker mm -hmm. is not a light unit, and it absorbs like nine bailings before it dies by gotcha. itself. Uh, and that's if your battery isn't even done somehow, and he's like super all in. And mm -hmm. then uh, your adepts could just get it behind it, like clean up all the links that flood through behind it, easy peasy. If it's because if it's that early, there's not going to be like a hundred links. There's going to be probably like twenty in total. Uh, so speaking of batteries, like uh, I'm not great at visually. Is there any hints you can have to sort of give me as to what the rough radius of a battery is? So here's the perfect um, way to put your battery. Mm -hmm. The exact same way I told you to build your gateway and your core initially, do the exact mm -hmm. same thing with your pylon and your battery, but do it reversed. So the way it works is your pylon is where it is. You do just mm -hmm. go one pixel down from the, the pylon and there's your battery. Or like one gotcha. like bound down to the left if you like don't want to make it too congested at your doorway or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just do not touch your pylon and your battery together ever. Do not do that. Gotcha. Because if you do that, ravagers are going to be a massive problem for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, I think I yeah. tend to put my battery nestled up against my nexus, which is less beneficial to the to the wall. Yeah, I think it's it's yeah it's 
the battery range radius, I would say, if you look at your Nexus right now, to the first adept in your doorway between the pylon and the gate, if the mm -hmm. if the pylon or sorry, if the uh, if the Nexus itself was the battery, you could pretty much heal that distance right there. Uh, gotcha, but that, not that, the other two adepts. Gotcha. No, you, no, you you could heal all three. But what I what I mean okay, is gotcha. uh, the the Nexus, like the range of a battery is about. I would say it's about five. And that's about mm -hmm. the same distance as it is is from the top right adept in between your in your wall right now to like the nexus itself. Mm -hmm. That's about five range. Gotcha. Uh, so cool. that's about how far a battery could heal if you're looking at like the edge of the nexus. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, if you if you think about like your battery being like one pixel down from the pilot and maybe like one to the left, you don't create a, a, a traffic jam in your door very much because it doesn't yeah, make yeah, a longer yeah. hallway. And then it also so it gives you a bit of open area, but then it also could easily heal every unit in, in the whole vicinity of the area that you'd be getting all in from if it happened. Cool. And then also another thing. Uh, I highly recommend how you built your second pylon at your natural down below your mineral line. Build it mm -hmm. again, maybe like another w one or two, maybe this time, pixel gap from your battery again. So like you have a pylon, battery pylon. Yeah, so you have yeah, a backup yeah. pylon to keep powering the the battery if you do get all in so you don't just get fucked if, you know, okay. if he like that focuses the pylon. Because your pylon is very exposed right now, which is a little yes, bit of a scary much. problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Right. Cool. And then, uh... <clears throat> Oscar, there's a late battery right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that battery would definitely not be in time if you were if you were actually going to go in. Okay. That's good to know. So, yeah, here I put the... Build the stalker. I hold position. Yeah. Uh, having a stalker at the door is amazing. I love it. Super good. And then at this time, taking the probe out when I'm pushing out it, thinking of pressure but also take a third yeah you should and then i'm like i'll, I'll pause it here and I'll, uh mm -hmm. keep keep going keep telling me what your idea is yeah so my idea here is okay i want to build a couple of units and pressure but i want to and i and i definitely struggle with this so something i need to practice with is you know i should be planting the nexus right now i recognize yeah um uh so as opposed to like a, my focus is sort of brought over um and i think too i'm bringing in the warp prism a little i don't know i always What's the rough vision radius from creep? Is it um, like I'm trying to see like before I hopped on the creep? Could they have? Could the? Could, let me see what he, he so, can see it or not. Yeah, the yeah. the there's always a chance of like overlords and like a random league scout maybe has his own Naga tower or something like that. That always mm -hmm. is a chance. But creep itself can actually not see shit. It's 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 only based off of tubers and hatcheries. A tuber mm -hmm. can pretty much see the entire tuber spread. Pretty much, mm -hmm. it's very close to seeing all of it. A hatchery is a little bit less because a hatchery's radius of creep is a bit bigger than a tuber. So, like, if you mm -hmm. look at where your adepts are right now, if he, uh, your first two adepts that are like touching the links, they could probably be seen. Maybe, maybe the far right one could be seen by the hatchery. It's questionable mm -hmm. if the middle adept could be, and the one that's like yellow health on the edge of his creep could not be seen. Uh, gotcha. Like, there are dead spots in the edge of creep from just the hatchery's vision itself. And you can tell this is just a hatchery because that's that that extension of creep is perfect for what a hatchery is only. Uh, gotcha. But yeah, I, I would say don't really worry about him seeing it or not, just because there's always a chance of like overlords and wings to be scattered. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it's more that like I think I definitely have had some times when the warp prism gets sniped because I'm too aggressive with putting it close to the fight as opposed to like oh yeah yeah for maybe sure maybe putting it a little bit down now like, right at the back of the ramp. Yeah, I would say that like the the that we're talking the prism. Yeah, that your I do think your prism is a little too close. Uh mm -hmm. so like uh your prism could like the prism could definitely not be seen if we're talking hatchery creep vision. That if you're if you're wondering that. Like that's definitely out. Mm -hmm. But okay. I I think of your prism, if you look down uh uh like down into the left a little bit, like the edge of your prism's vision, do you see that little cancel button on the screen? Like it's on the terrain of the of the map. Uh Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if down you put here, your prism yeah, like yeah, yeah. there, that would be perfect. You want it to be like basically almost like a full screen like the way from the hatchery. Like ba if you have like if you could just like it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you just kind of assume like okay, well I'm going to I'm going to set up my attack here, one screen mm -hmm. length away from his base. That's where I'm going to do it mm -hmm. at. That's great yeah. because his queens would have to overextend off of creep to kill it. So you could easily kill queens if yeah, you try to do that. Okay, that that makes sense. That makes and sense. And that your adepts only have to walk for like 2 seconds to get the hatchery. So it's yeah. very okay. it's lighter. Cool. And yeah, you're so yeah, not jading obviously, and then uh, the roaches come out, and I'm like, I think there's not a ton initially, and I'm like, Hon I can... honestly, I would say you should shade here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 sorry, okay, I, I see what you're saying. For a second, I thought you were like, so obviously I'm not shading because it's the right thing to do, and uh, but you're you're saying right. that it's a mistake that you made, and you should yeah. be doing it. Yeah, I got, I got you. Uh, but yeah, like with this, there's called uh, conceptually, you have to think about what you're doing, okay? 
And this is why I wanted you to tell me your plan, which is obviously you're, you're gonna. You said you're gonna take a third, which is I agree with that. That's perfect. Because the reason why that's that's important to know that is because you do mm -hmm. not have enough gateways for this to be worth it to skip your third. If you had seven right. gates right now, I'd be like, yeah, totally don't take your third. Go for a timing. And like try to kill him. Uh, do mm -hmm. as much damage as you can. But what you should do right now, the, the, the concept of what you should be going for, because you should be taking a third, avoid every fight as much as possible. And kill mm -hmm. drones. That is the whole aspect of what you should be doing. And what, mm -hmm. you should, be, what should happen is, this is how it should go. Don't overcommit. So, like, again, this is not null in. So you're not, you should not overcommit here. The fact that you have a prism mm -hmm. is already committed in itself. Because uh, mm -hmm. it means you're going to do continuous warpins. But this is how you should do it. Group number one, you run up to the front of his base. As you run up to the front of his base, you shade to his natural. You do not have mm -hmm. to force a shade if it looks really bad. But and so if you cancel your first shade, you wait for the second shade. If you don't mm -hmm. cancel your first shade because it looks okay, you let it go through. And then you warp it another round. You only warp mm -hmm. it another round when it looks like it's okay that you're going to set up a multi-prong. So, for mm -hmm. instance, okay, no defense at the natural. Or like he's, you know, he doesn't have enough. Basically, it's like it'll be two roaches or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. You commit. You then start killing drones to the natural. You warp in another round of adepts at your mm -hmm. prism in the fucking... Uh, at, yeah, at down the here at the cancel button. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you said now that you re uh, once again initiate a shade. You run in your adepts from the third, like the, the prism to the third base of Zerg. Or, or you can shade it in either way. That's not really a big mm -hmm. deal. Uh, and then you shade from the natural to the main. Gotcha. And then if you see things are going well, and you're like, wow, I'm really fucking them up, you could throw in another wave of adepts. Uh, like, mm -hmm. a, you could warp in another round, and then you could shade from, uh, you know, the, the main could, like, drag them all the way to the edge of the main, the third could shade to the natural, and then the prism could shade to the third. Right, you could just sort of wax you, on, wax off. Yeah, you, you, just keep, keep, yeah you just keep pulling it back, pulling it back, like, pulling around his base. And you just, like, mm -hmm. literally rotate around repeatedly as much as possible. It's, it's annoying as so, fuck. So, well, so let's say for this example, if I start trudging in here and I immediately shade and then I see these roaches, do I then pull my adepts back towards the warp prism? Yes. To Okay. So sort of like that, that, that yo-yo kind of situation yeah. where I'm like, okay, uh, okay. That it, makes sense. It would have made sense. If he commits, if he, if he commits to the shade, I cancel it. And then if he commits to the actual units, then I maintain the shade yes. and then he's that much further away. Yep. Gotcha. That makes sense. It would have made sense to fight these roaches if you had seven gates. Because then you're all right. you're all about like but it's still it doesn't make sense to not shade though. It would have made sense to fight mm -hmm. the roaches. Like cast the shade first and then also fight the roaches if you had enough gates to just be like, well I'm gonna fuck your roaches up. Like I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep applying pressure here so you don't just get to chase the shade. And I have enough mm -hmm. adepts that even if you stay here to fight my adepts, when my shade appears, all your drones are gonna die. Like that would mm -hmm. make sense there if that was your plan. Uh, so like mm -hmm. Pressuring everything all the time is okay, but if you mm -hmm. if you're only if if your whole plan here is just I'm gonna kill drones, it makes more sense to conserve your units, like preserve them as long as possible, and don't take a fight if it's unnecessary. So, for instance, mm -hmm. you shade in and you see nothing, you're like, oh, well, now I have time to kill drones. That's great. I'm mm -hmm. gonna slow him down by killing drones. But if he chases, if he just chases the shade and you cancel it, you could walk into his third base and once again kill a queen or kill drones. Fuck his macro over. Mm -hmm. And then re gotcha. reinitiate a shade, repeat the process. Uh, and then behind and then again, the also it's still late on the third too. As yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like <laughs> a time for you. So you said two thirty for Zerg, which is a I would say yeah, that's appropriate. Around right around there is a good time for a third for a Zerg. For you, mm -hmm. if you're gonna do four gate pressure builds and then go into a uh, a third base, bec I would say if it was just four gate with single tech, like four gate Twilight Council, four forty five is what I would say. But you have mm -hmm. double tech. Because you went for a robo, and you also took a forge. Mm -hmm. Don't I would say do not take your forge until after your third. Uh, okay. I would say because you went robo and council for the the prism as well, your third should be going down at five minutes. Uh, it's like, like a little bit later, but not by much. I would say five minutes would be an appropriate third for you, and you have a little bit more potential now with your prism to be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is how I think you should do it too. Okay, so there should be three phases of this harass for you. Mm -hmm. It should be phase one is what we just talked about. You just shade in, shade in, shade in, see what you can do. And then it turns mm -hmm. into phase two, which is phase two is you decide if it is worth it to keep warping it or not. So you go, mm -hmm. okay, well, if he has a lot of shit here, let's not keep warping it. Let, let's just mm -hmm. use what I have and then call it a day. If, uh, so or, like when, I, when, when I hear a lot of shit, I'm thinking like a sea of Zerg speedlings or I'm thinking like 
you know, more than five roaches, right? Like this, yeah. this player definitely, yeah. they were very uh, pragmatic about how many units they produced. So it, yeah. was, it was a good response. <clears throat> so yeah, if basically if you see an amount of zerg units that where if your adepts gets get caught for all of like four seconds and all your adepts are gonna die, that's a lot of shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this I would say is not worthy of a lot of shit. And uh, if you see someone you who continue looks, continue the pressure. Yeah, exactly. You could do like I would say a second warped round is acceptable, and then stop there. No more than two mm -hmm. warped rounds ever. Like do not just be like continuous, 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 because. The only way that would make sense is if you actually had a build design for that, which was not take your third base and instead had more gates. So just do one warp and round initially always, and then add in a second one if they look light on the defense and you can pressure them a little harder and kill drones more mm -hmm. effectively. Here's how this goes, though. This is what I would say. This this would make the most sense. So that's phase two. You make a choice whether it makes sense to make more or not. The mm -hmm. third and last phase, use the prism more because you have it. And this is how you should do this. As soon as you warp in the second round, if it happens... Stop mm -hmm. warping in from there. Turn your prism mm -hmm. into a transport mode, and you can mm -hmm. sh you can change your adepts toward. You can literally take those th adepts, go to his third base again, shade them into his third, fly your prism to the edge of his cliff at his third base, kill whatever you can there. If there's drones there, and if there's not drones there, load those adepts oh, you mean up. Like down here-ish. Oh, let me see. So like your like you, the, the cancel button would be where your prism is, right? And then your mm -hmm. prism literally flies directly to the right, to the edge of his cliff. Mm -hmm. All the third base. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And then, uh, and then you literally just kill whatever he has there, be it, be it a queen, be it drones, whatever. It probably won't be drones here, if, most likely, for most of the time. But then you can take the prism and you can pick up the adepts, and you can go literally mm -hmm. like a big semicircle all the way from down, left, up. Like, you, you you know, you rotate all the way around the edge, like not through his base, but you rotate around his base, all the way to the main base now. And you drop mm -hmm. the adepts at the edge of his main base, and you, uh, you phase them into his mineral line. And as you phase mm -hmm. them into his mineral line, they don't take damage from anything that could be there because they're phasing forward. And then right, it's like a cancel if there's a spine crawler there or no, no, you, you actually nothing. you almost never cancel here anymore. And this is why okay. I would say this: you while the shades are going forward, you fly the prism forward. This is something that you can only do once you have a prism. And because you're investing into a prism, this is fucking the reason why I'm saying you to do for telling you to do this is because if you're going to add a prism, if you want to do this, it is very very expensive to do that, and you might as well make it worth it. So mm -hmm. what you do is you drop the adepts at the edge of his base, you shade to his mineral line, you fly mm -hmm. on the edge of his base to his the back of his mineral line. You then mm -hmm. kill whatever you can there, and then you pick up the adepts once it looks like they're compromised. Mm -hmm. So you, it's like guaranteed like two or three drone kills every time without losing adepts. And then you just gotcha. fly away, shield to generate, you do it again somewhere else, or come back like maybe 20 seconds later and do it again. And okay. you, you like this way. What it would do too is if, if you could do this successfully, it would a, a lot of times it will apply pressure to the Zerg and keep them off of attacking you because they'll be like, "Oh mm -hmm. my god, this fucking prism is annoying, and I got to defend it." That makes sense. Because if you just pull okay. back after you do pressure like this, while also going into a prism, and he just goes for a counter all in, there's chances you could die or your third will break. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be a good way to keep pressure on the Zerg and do it cost efficiently, where you're not warping in shitloads, but instead you're just using what you have. And then what you should do, be doing behind this now uh, would be you have the robo already, so you can start making immortals. You could also start mm -hmm. another upgrade off of your council, which you are, which is charge lots. And you could be going into charge lot immortal and eventually adding on archons, which would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that tends to be usually how I sort of phase the... Um, yeah, so at this point I'm like, okay, these guys are getting messed up. I'm just going to peace out and just I want to get my... Th so... Still about 30 seconds late on the third. It could have been done at the yeah. first round of war bins. Yeah, yeah. Which definitely... But yeah, I tend to, you know... I tend to... Move into Charge Lot Archon Immortal. I, uh, I think it's a good idea. And then... Because, you know, especially like... I, I, I Definitely in Heart of the Swarm, I was more of a Stalker Sentry Colossus guy. But obviously that, that sort of... That style isn't quite as effective anymore because of the way they changed the Colossus damage. Uh -huh. um, especially against Roaches because yeah. they just kind of... Yeah, no, it's very true. Uh, Colossus style kind of sucks though. Uh, like, it's not bad, but it's definitely not good also because of Ravager. Like, it's... Mm. There's other things that make Colossus harder to use now. Also Lurker. Uh, yeah. So I, I think Charge Lot Archon... Or, yeah, Charge Lot Archon Immortal is a great idea. It's totally fine. Um, so I guess then the question is, what's the what's the follow up for me? Like, so let's say I, in this case I didn't really do damage, and he's sort of <laughs> happily, he's 
I mean, he's behind in workers, but he's got his third established. Uh -huh. So, you know, whenever I kind of do this, my next sort of phase is now I'm like terrified of the follow up. Right? Yeah, and exactly. This is I, think how you, I, tend to... I, I think you should be. And uh, okay. this is this is why you overcommitted to the pressure you did. And you mm -hmm. didn't use like that's why I told you about the prism stuff you should be doing because mm -hmm. that's the only way I would justify it, that it would be worth it because okay. you did not like you, you basically I would if, if there was like a, a scale okay for like pressure that is acceptable for how much this prism did and it's out of like a hundred percent like if you're uh, you know like a pro level Protoss you could hit that hundred mm -hmm. percent I would mm -hmm. uh, like don't don't take this the wrong way okay but sure. I, I would say your pr your prism pressure the fact that you invested into it. It did about ten percent what it could have done. Understood. Yeah. Uh, and it's just because you you did not shade it all through his base. You get mm -hmm. to, you went to the edge. You got shoved away by a couple of roaches and queens because you took the fight and then you just flew away. Mm. And the amount the amount of investment you put into that, which was glaives and also robo, so you you went double tech. Uh, mm -hmm. You made prism glaives, which is mm -hmm. extremely invested. That means your third base is delayed by like thirty seconds because the mm. the council delays your third by like fifteen seconds. And the uh, robo delays your third by like another fifteen seconds, mm -hmm. so your third is super late. And then your your third also got delayed because you uh, and that's like acceptable timings. Your third also got delayed a little more on top of that, mm -hmm. just because you were trying to like deal with the roaches and queens and not lose your shit. Right. So your third was delayed by about almost like fifty seconds this game, uh, where it could have been for what you did, because what you could have done is you could have accomplished the same exact thing, just making non glaive non prismed adepts. Walk over there, poke his roaches and queens, and then shade home, and do gotcha. like literally just do nothing. Uh, and and uh, go ahead. Let's just say, and here's another classic problem I have, and I think it, I I suspect you'll agree with me. I suspect this is just poor macro, but like I find myself with like lots of resources and low production, so I'm like I'll drop a Templar archive and a Robo Bay. Like I kind of like, and I think that kind of diversifies my tech a little too much. Sure, it's it's just really that comes down to knowing when to throw down what. Uh, mm -hmm. you, so you have to just understand cost of things and uh, mm -hmm. what is what is capable. And I would say this. The fact that you went for four gates before a third is okay as long as you do pressure. Like as long as you actually do pressure. And I would I honestly mm -hmm. would not really classify what you did there as pressure. That was kind of like yeah. easily defended. So yeah. that's something massive to work on if you want to keep doing this version. Uh, mm -hmm. I will, I'll say this. When I... After this replay is over, I'm going to give you two options. One will be... I could make you a new build that might be suited more for what you're looking for. Like less, mm -hmm. like more in the ma macro power. You could still do harassment, but it has less emphasis on the harass. The build you're doing right now okay. has a shitload of emphasis on the harass. It really does. Okay. Like this prism yeah, needs to be. I, I, I think I watched a stats game and I was like, okay, I'll try yeah. that. And obviously, it's sure. so like, I'm yeah. not that level of player. So this prism, I'll just say this. This is my honest opinion. This prism needs to be attacking constantly. Like, we need to be, like, utilizing the shield regeneration of Adepts and the Prism itself and the, you know, the damage potential of the Adepts that you have in this Prism, because especially since they have Glaives. It needs to be doing mm -hmm. shit for, like, three solid minutes. And okay, I think gotcha. you attacked for about 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah, no greed. Uh, and then also, you never shaded, so, like, you never even pressured drones once. So, it's, it's yeah, it's it would miss the beat pretty hard on how much it should have done. Uh, mm -hmm. So, if you want to do the Prism route, it definitely needs to go like that. But if you want to skip the prism, you could do something that's a little easier to uh, like to ma maintain right now, which could still be a glaive adept opener, and you can still mm -hmm. pressure with your first adepts. But this one's going to be more like you will commit a little harder, like you'll just kind of dive for drones. Essentially, is what the plan would what, gotcha. basically the play, like you just dive mm -hmm. for drones, um, and then uh, okay. you go from there. Like it's always about like just. Like, maximizing your shade like every time the shades up shade every time the shades up shade you always go to the next base next base next base you can literally bounce between the natural and the main even it just because that's where most of the drones will be uh gotcha. and then you just always kill drones kill drones kill drones kill drones and behind this you make uh <clears throat> you could be going uh into immortal archon charge lot so if the if the uh zerg decides you know after he kills your adepts oh let's go all in now i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go attack the protoss now if you have a yeah. battery at your third if you have a battery at your natural and then you have just a good amount of our immortal and coverage for the immortal at this point already, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, I so, feel like that build would probably be an easier build to go for. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think certainly like my multitasking, you know, isn't where it needs to be for the probably the warp prism value that sure, you're kind sure. of referring to. Yeah, it, it definitely. Yeah, it needs to be way more aggressive.
because the the thing about a prism, a, a prism that is very very powerful, is indirect damage that Zerg thinks they're gonna take, which is why they don't move out. Because if they do mm. move out, they will take fuckloads of damage. So it keeps right. Zerg defensive, which is why whenever you see Protosses do prism builds, if it's not an all-in prism build, like we're talking like an early game, like Archon drop or some shit like that, like they kind of like. They, they, I would say they fell out of flavor a little bit. Some Protoss still do it. Like, someone like Stats would be perfect because his Prism Micro is r absurdly fucking good. Right. Uh, but, but a lot of Protosses kind of fell out of flavor of these kinds of builds more so, I would say, just because uh, it's builds that if, if the Zerg can handle it, the Prism pressure, there's a lot of vulnerability there if the Prism is across mm -hmm. the map and the Protoss is being greedy behind it. Like, gotcha. Prism builds usually pair with all-ins uh, for early game gotcha. Prisms. Uh, anyway, yeah. I do like that you're kind of wasting your immortals. Uh, this is very important. Uh, I yeah, I mean, I think that. they're just such a valuable. Well, this time it's an observer because I'm like, I want to see what's <clears> going on. I want to, because again, I don't have. Well, I do have some sentries, but I don't think I have enough energy. And I think that was I, a dump right there because I had a ton of gas. So I'll, I was I'll, like, I'm actually gonna pause and I'm gonna say I agree with how you made sentries. I think you should make mm -hmm. sentries after your pressure. That's okay. great. Uh, and I also think you should Chrono Boost Immortals after your pressure. And the reason why mm -hmm. is because you're opening up Council first, not Robo first. So your Immortals are delayed. Mm -hmm. So if you lose those mm -hmm. Adepts like in, in your pressure, and this is going to be the same thing as the build I, I would show you as well if we do the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, like you're going to need to fall back on Immortal. And Sentry is going to help too a lot to just buy time for Immortals to shoot and not die. Okay. Uh, so more than, uh, I would say this many Sentries, like three or four, don't, don't make any more after that. Like that's good. All game. Okay. Because it's going to buy you time to get to the immortal count that's going to keep you safe to, you know, no longer have sentries. To where now you can just straight yeah. up just stand there and beat the shit out of a Zerg as he has more shit than you. Yeah. I, I'll say in, in wings, I, I miss the damage that sentries used to have because they could actually do shit with them. Yeah, yeah, right. They were. <laughs> yeah. Now they're like, it's like bubble guns. <laughs> just like yeah. bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, and then uh, another thing too is uh, make sure heavily that you're not missing the beat on your your economy as well, because we're at seven minutes right now. And there you go, you finally transferred. So your third mm -hmm. base is definitely very very slow on the saturation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what I would say. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna say three gate openers. I think is gonna be your new goal. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'll just pause it really fast, and you you can tell me if you like the sound of this build, okay? Mm -hmm. Give you a 3 gate opener. That's going to be an adept pressure against Zerg. It's going to follow mm -hmm. up into Immortals and Charge Lots. And you can mm -hmm. make some sentries too and some stalkers just before you have charge in case the Zerg goes for like a roach all in. But it mm -hmm. will eventually become Charge Lot Immortal. We're going to add more gates after 3 to your third base. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add a, like 3 more gates to your third now. So this is going to take you to like 6 gateways. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is exactly what you're on right now. It's just that your gateways are all located in the front of your natural and also in your main base in like the south. Sort of as natural. a buffer, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we'll use these gates as a do like we'll have one gate basically in your base that's like near the council from like your initial three gate, but then every other mm -hmm. gate, all the other five gates are going to be in front of your natural and in front of your third. This helps a lot with Zerg so, to go for like baneling heavy and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I know when I first was playing on this map, I was doing like a pylon and then blocking off on this back door over here. The rocks, you but mean? But then, yeah, and then roach, but then hydras and like roaches yeah. were just like smashing it down. I would so. say definitely don't block the rocks off entirely, mm -hmm. unless you were doing a build that was really greedy, like a fucking carrier build or something like that. Gotcha. But if you're going to do a build that's like more charge lot, uh, mortal focused, what you could do instead is you could actually connect the nexus to the, to the wall north of your third. So it literally goes straight up off of your nexus. Yeah. That yeah. way, like... You, that'll help against Banelings rolling exactly. around. So, right? like, he has to yeah. go south of your nexus to hit do melee units. But if gotcha. he if he tries to attack you with, like, Hydras, you still get the concave to his convex because he still has to go through the choke point of gotcha. the rocks. And you don't have to go through yeah, that choke point. Yeah, sometimes I put the gateways on the eastern side of the nexus, and then all of a sudden I have the choke point. You know what I mean? Like, it's like <laughs> exactly, I'm, yeah. Yeah. So if you okay, just if you sense. just yeah connect the nexus to the wall, it, cre it keeps you safe from melee, but it keeps you still op like you can still fuck over his range units that way. So uh, is it, it would I put like a mirror pylon on the other side of the nexus, yeah. like I have at my third, and then just extend it up there? Yeah, uh, you would put okay. it maybe like uh, maybe like one pixel to the left, straight up. If it is where it is gotcha. now, that's okay still, but maybe like one pixel to the left, and then you just make gateways on the right side of it and connect it to the wall. 
And this way, and I forget. Or go ahead. Do I need to worry about blocking gas mining? Like, is that something I need to be concerned about? Are you talking about like building an assimilator in his base? No, 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 no. Do I like if I move the pylon further to the left of where it is? Oh no, sorry, I got you. Yeah, no, you're fine. Uh, okay. So like the mouse over, like cl just click the gas, the top gas at your mm -hmm. third base, and now mouse mm -hmm. over through Nexus. And you see two yellow circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as there's like a straight line you can draw between them, you're fine. Gotcha. So if your pylon was like to the right of that, but not completely blocking it, you'd be okay. Understood. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. I I like your hallucination scouts as well. By the way, that's really good. Uh, I would say I would actually. I'm not gonna lie. I would prefer your observer to be. Uh, I mean, it's okay for now. I would just like you to grab it later. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't. I would want it to not die, but at the same time, I want you to have an observer defensively in case this Zerg were to do something like, for instance, do some type of weird ass like fucking lurker rush. Like it's mm -hmm. it's it's not likely. I'll say that. But if you're mm -hmm. gonna scout, anyways, like the, the who stations can do it for you, uh, mm -hmm. straight up. So I, 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 if you're gonna make one observer, I want it to be. Def I would prefer it to be defensive with your army. Gotcha. Because uh, I wouldn't want you to like just not have it, and then you're like, "Oh shit, lurkers," which could happen at some point. Yep. Because we're getting pretty late in the game now. <clears throat> um. But yeah, now we're, we're gonna. So we kind of went through your initial build. It's not bad. I can see what you're going for, and I think I can modify it to a better degree for you. So now we'll kind of go through this a lot faster, just to give you cool. concepts of like how to attack, and then we'll mm -hmm. go. We'll create a build for you after this. So I, I think I scout the Hydra Den, so this is why I go, okay, start pumping out Colossi, and I'm, like, mentally, like, okay, well, I'm low on gas, but, you know, high on minerals, so I'll burn it on some uh, some zealots. Are you, uh, are you comfortable using disruptors? Not great. I would like to use them more because they are so effective. Yeah. Um, but it's something I, I, I don't know how to practice with effectively. Because... I, I'm going to pause it and just say really fast. If you mm -hmm. actually... Seeing what he has, okay? Seeing that he has mm -hmm. Roach Hydra. There's a chance this could become Roach Ravager Hydra. This could become just straight up Roach Hydra. It could turn into mass mm -hmm. roaches after Hydra's die. It could turn into Hydra Lurker. Roach Hydra Lurker. Mm -hmm. Like all these different things that are like Roach Hydra based. Mm -hmm. Disruptor is about like 10 times as more effective than a Colossus here. The only time Colossus yeah. would be more effective would be if it was no roaches at all. If it was pure Hydra, or if it was Hydra like Zergling, like Hydraling Bane, or something like that, mm. then Colossus would be amazing. But the col see. the Colossus will never chew through the roaches fast enough to actually, like you'll you'll basically the Colossus has like a it's like a, a damage tipping point where your front line dies before your Colossus kills everything of their side, or his mm. front line dies before your front line dies because Colossus are mowing shit down. So then your Colossus are gotcha. mowing down the back line. But the Colossus are never going to target the back line ever unless you're physically microing that. And nobody does that because it compromises the Colossus, first of all. Yeah, it puts them right up in the front. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so that that's mainly why you wouldn't do it. And then also, it's just so much micro there that, like, no one would ever do that as well. Like, it's just not going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. So the Colossus, basically, if you're going up a bunch, against a bunch of roaches, the Colossus are never going to chew through the roach line before your front line dies, realistically. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. if, so the disruptor, disruptor is a better... Splash damage yeah, in this a, a disruptor time. one shots everything of Zerg here. Uh, like if you connect to anything, like five roaches get touched by the disruptor Nova as it blows up, they all die. Mm -hmm. uh, and what a disruptor can do too is it can be non-committal engagements where you can just throw disruptor shots at him and don't throw them all at once. Just periodically mm -hmm. throw one, throw one, throw so one. This is a good opportunity to talk about you know as a typical Protoss player, I'm used to a single control group and maybe a second one for my observer. Um, <laughs> sure. So, so for when I try to use disruptors, I try to have them on a move command against something on my main army, and then have a separate control group for them specifically. Because otherwise, they just their dumb asses just face tank everything, right? So, like, that's you know obviously varying degrees of success and practice for that. But is that the general so suggestion that I should be doing? If, with I would that? say I would say this. Uh, if you actually use two control groups, that would be wonderful. Uh, just for like mm -hmm. one for one for disruptors and one for your main army, that'd be fine. Mm -hmm. But just think about it like this, okay? There's like a priority that changes, and your priority is no longer aggression. Your priority is defense. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, if you think about it like this, where you go, uh, I know where he is because I have tabs on that in some way, shape, mm -hmm. or form. Maybe you build a pylon around your base, and you see he kills a pylon. It's like a trip wire, or maybe you have like a, a couple of who stated sentries. Uh, like casting Phoenix that are just like mm -hmm. going out there. Do something that gives you vision, basically. 
and then mm -hmm. you go, oh, he's over there. Let him engage you rather than you engage him. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, because if you if you attack him, what you're saying will happen. Where you're like, well, my disruptors are like just running into the front. They're dying because I'm like trying to set up the fight. We're in fog of war. I'm going aggressive. It's getting sloppy as shit. But if you're the mm -hmm. one, <coughs> if you're the one <coughs> that's like defending your base and you're guarding yourself and you're letting him walk into you as you cast disruptor shots at him, your army does not engage with that. You just throw disruptor shots at him first and let him mm -hmm. run into that shit. Suddenly, gotcha. your your fights go way better uh, because you're not actually having to micro all of the shit, well, all of your shit at once. You're just letting your shots go out. That's all you're doing. Gotcha. If you cool. if you whiff the shot too, it's not a big deal. Like, because the point is, you make more than one. This is also why you don't cast all your shots at once. So don't yeah, be don't yeah. be that guy that's like five disruptors, all five shots all at once, and we'll just panic. Yeah. Uh, the, you, the bunny shot. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you just if you just periodically throw like one every four seconds, you're great. Because it's like a 20 second cooldown. So if you have like five disruptors, yeah. you can pre pretty much always have a shot. A shot. A shot. Like gotcha, always gotcha. having it happen. Uh, that makes it, sense. It would be it, The reason why I'm telling you to do that is because you're going double robo, robo bay. And that would be so much better than going Colossus here. Gotcha. Uh, also, the other thing that's good about Disruptor 2 is what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a concept out here for you. And if you don't understand it, it it's totally fine. I, I'm just going to make you think about it for a second. What is the most scary thing when you play against Mass Roaches? Like, what do you feel like as a Protoss player is, is is scary there? Uh, what's the most scary thing as a Protoss player against Mass Roaches? Yeah. Is just they're gonna just chew through my gateway units usually. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it, okay. or open field is the worst. Like, if I have if I'm caught in an open field and I get surrounded by this massive concave of roaches, and then like. I just lose my supply. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, you have you have the concept right, which is you're gonna he's gonna have an overwhelming number of shit against you, right? It's like he, mm -hmm. you're gonna have like 120 supply. He could have like 170 because he's got shitloads of roaches. Um, mm -hmm. Which again, you've seen he has a big, a heavy roach uh, investment out, out of his army. Mm -hmm. You saw mostly roaches, even though there were some hydra. Uh, it is still mm -hmm. mostly roaches. So having an army that's huge is the scary part. Now think about this: if you go disruptor, they're much cheaper than colossus. And they don't require mm -hmm. an upgrade. They're much. They're mm -hmm. a much cheaper investment as a whole, which allows you to mm -hmm. invest money elsewhere to do something like buffer your supply higher to do things like more gateway investments. Mm -hmm. So your supply will be bigger because you don't go Colossus. Gotcha. So yeah, like, yeah. So if you're like, let's say you have like four Colossus at 130 supply or 140 supply, you could have like four disruptors at like 160 supply or 170 supply. Probably more like 160. Cool. Yeah, it'd gotcha. be like like twenty supply bonus because you just have more money to invest into like stalkers or whatever zealots, archons. Oh, and this is you know you can see on the map I'm trying to build a fourth here. What's the timing? I you know quote unquote ideally a fourth should be at. Um, so if you're not going to be all in and you're going to take a fourth just mm -hmm. macro defensively, you should have taken your fourth probably by like eight minutes. Eight uh, minutes. Like se like seven eight minutes. It should have been take, like started as your third got saturated. And I'll, that'll be part of the example build I'll give you. So you'll have an exact cool. timer to reference. So yeah, I start pumping out two Colossi now because I'm just like, I've got two Robos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and then he's doing a good job. I've moved the Observer over here just so I can see the juggling. Uh, but I think he takes out the Observer. Yep, there we go. Yeah. So, so I don't, like, I mean... With your army, if, it, if you actually were to get like storm with this, this could actually beat Roach Hydra now. But the, like so mm -hmm. that like Roach Hydra does have an exp expiration date against this kind mm -hmm. of army for you because your army is actually more expensive. It is better if you can get to a high supply. I feel like if you rush, I think this is a bad mistake here. Is pushing out. I agree. I, think, I don't. I don't think you should push either because your army is, like, is not ready yet. It's it's almost yeah, yeah. there. Um, I decide to take some vision, which is sort of. Better late than never. No one takes the towers. Yeah, yeah. My level. Um, so what I and think. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm high on mineral, so I'm just, I'm gonna put f five gateway down because my macro is terrible. Like I recognize that. <laughs> no, it, it's that's totally fine. I, I agree with you. Like you should, uh, you should definitely throw in more gates as soon as you take your fourth base. You should start having a gateway explosion. Uh, what's like a what's like a uh, the like? Is it like? I've heard like eleven. Is that like a sensible number? This, this of, is what I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna give you. I, I, like, throw everything out the window that you've heard in terms of like, mm -hmm. like if someone who's like GM is like, this is what is required. It's like that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. play with, but it's not so applying to someone in diamond. Um, mm -hmm. Throw the, the, just do this, okay? Every base you own, it represents four gateways. 
So gotcha. And you but you do not explode your gates until uh, four ga four base. So you have like the three gates initially for your two base setup because you're doing a timing. Mm -hmm. Then you add on three more for your third, as we talked about. So you'll be at mm -hmm. six gate three base. That'll be always mm -hmm. happening that way. But as soon as you take your fourth and saturate your fourth, and now all your investments are kind of done. Like you're done making probes. You're done making mm -hmm. pylons because you're at 200 supply already. Like the, the max supply is there. You're done making your tech. It's all unlocked already. Like all this shit's, mm -hmm. in the, the investments are done. Your money gets freed mm -hmm. up a lot. And now you're making the most that you're ever making because you have all your probes what, now. What, what probe count should I be looking for? Like, I would say, honestly, with this kind of a style, if you're going to go defensive four base, you should go to 80. 80 probes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, and once you have all that shit done, all your costs are gone. Now you just create mm -hmm. more production capabilities, and I would say, I'm not even kidding, go to like anywhere in the range of 12 to 16 gates would be okay. Mm -hmm. Because if you have, let's say you have like a, like two robos or something like that, I would say more like 12 gates would be appropriate. But if you have like one robo, more like 14 gates. Because one robo is okay. worth the value of like two gates. It's pretty expensive gotcha. to make out of a robo. Uh, so yeah, and like if you go between anywhere between 12 and 16 gates, that'd be great. And then one or two robos would be fine. Um, mm -hmm. And that would be fucking awesome. And then from there, just maintain oh, four base economy. Yeah. So you don't need to make four gates, four gates, four gates again and again and again. Yeah, Every yeah, single yeah. time at new bases because you're not making more probes to saturate them. You're just rotating probes around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Understood. Understood. Uh, cool. Yeah. And then that's, that, that'll be, that literally could be your production. All right. And then... Uh, yeah, I mean, right now what you should be doing, since um, I agree, I, I do think you should be a little more defensive just because you're not even close to max yet. Uh, yeah, I think I'm like, okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, this is why I do the classical overextension here, and yeah. I'm like, I'm just trying to clean up some creep, but like, then, yeah, he just comes in and yeah. I lose my army, which is pretty much GG at that point in time. Yeah, it's uh, the fact that he has lurkers sucks for you because lurkers hard counter the shit out of Colossus and Stalker. Uh, the, the, yeah. But if you go like Archon Immortal Charge lot, suddenly you can actually deal with Lurkers. Uh, like they can actually, Archons and Immortals can actually beat the shit out of Lurkers if you get a good concave. Mm. Like the more spread out you are, Archon Immortal wins to get that fight. The more as opposed like, to the ball. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if, you're, if you actually went through a choke point like these rocks, for instance, into like twelve Lurkers on the other side, you would lose that fight because the more collapsed yeah. you are, the more you're going to get AoE'd. Uh, yeah. And I think um, so. The one thing I struggle with definitely, you know, it's. Losing my observers is a common problem. Uh, in when because I see I do see a lot of like lurker investment at my level from the Zerg, and it's yeah. just like it, they'll frequently have an overseer and snipe the, and then it's just like it's just this. I find I'm having to like make like observers constantly just to be able to. Here's to what you can do. Keep vision. Yeah, this is what you can do. Uh, just a simple fix for that. Make like two observers. And then have one observer in your army where you a move it around, and have the other observer mm -hmm. out of your army, and just right click it on an immortal. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just have it move command up, like follow an immortal, and then that immortal. Mm -hmm. that, if that immortal doesn't die, that observer will just follow it around. And if you have a, if you're pushing it intelligent times, the the whole idea is you're not going to be like losing chunks of your army. Uh, right. <laughs> the idea for immortal arc on charge law is always this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fight with zealots, and when zealots bleed out, back off. And then mm -hmm. don't throw away power supply. Power supply is Archons and Immortals. Mm -hmm. So be willing to lose your Zealots, but do not be willing to lose your Archon Immortal. And then every time you do this, if you do it properly, so you, you like take a fight, you go, okay, I, well, I took a fight and I, you know, I lost Zealots, but I also fucked the Zerg over. I'm going to back off, make more Zealots and add on more Archon Immortal. So like your Archon Immortal always grows. And then when it gets to a point where your Archon Immortal is now pretty much all you have and you're like, well, before, my percentage-wise was like 70% Zealot, 30% Archon Immortal. Suddenly now, because I've retained my Archon Immortal, now I have 80% Archon Immortal and only 20% mm -hmm. Zealot. At that mm -hmm. point, now you could be like, well, I could just push now. Because I have like 12 Immortals and like 8 Archons. My mm -hmm. army is like fucking heavy on Archon Immortal. And yeah, this yeah. is so much power that I can now just push. And like, if the Zerg is still Roach Hydra there, you automatically win the game. The only gotcha. way Zerg beats that army is if they have like Broodlords. I'm not even kidding. Uh, like lurkers don't even like uh, the only way lurkers would win is if you walk through like the worst fucking choke point and you were like, well, that right. sucked. <laughs> like that was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Now talking about this army right here, you're using right now. The proper way to micro this would have been you actually had Sentry Colossus, which is uh, I mean, you don't want to fight the lurker, but yeah. imagine if you would have locked out one doorway. So he engages right now. 
it's uh, it's like starting to happen, and you have f you have force fields, so that should be your goal here. Mm -hmm. You see him engaging with a lot of shit all over the place. You could force field one of two ways. I would say you could force field the the the, the rocks where like you know the lurkers are. That would be more intelligent in my opinion because you don't want to just walk into lurkers if there's a mm -hmm. lot of them. But if you would have saw like let's say no lurkers here, or if there's like not enough lurkers to be scary, you could force mm -hmm. field his army out on the ramp on the left side, and then walk into his third and kill his third. Mm. Or you could force field if there's too many lurkers to be intimidating. Now, you could force field the the between the, the like the opening between the rocks, the destructible rocks, and the wall to lock out where the lurkers could push you from and those extra roaches and hydras, and then you could just straight up engage his corruptor and then his other side of his army, and then for instance, you could let only like maybe the first like six units go through like a little bit of his army on the left mm -hmm. side, and then force field like cut in between it, so you're only fighting a little tiny chunk of roach hydra, and you could also kill the corruptor. And back off, and now suddenly both sides are locked out. I think this is another classic uh, Protoss problem for Diamond level is that I have my High Templar and my sentries on the. I think there's a point I'm desperately trying to force field here in terms of my actions. Yeah, but your but your High Templar take the priority. Yeah, so yeah. I keep forgetting the tab and like, so I think that's another thing similar to the disruptors. I need to move them to their own control group and just I would move say command yeah, among. Yeah, move move like I would say move Templar to their own control group. In my opinion, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. yeah. That's what I meant. if yeah. you uh, if you have anything that has AOE that is a valuable unit, it should be on its own group. You should get in the habit of doing okay. that. So like Zergs do this with Infestors, Prodos should do this with Disruptors or Templar. And here's the thing too, if you have Disruptor or Templar, just put whatever the priority is on its own group. So for instance, mm. if you think about it like this, okay, think about this. If you have uh, if you were playing against this army specifically, and you had uh, the army was Roach Hydra Lurker. Uh, with a couple of corruptor, and you let's say you mm -hmm. had both Templar and Disruptor, what do you think the priority would be there with what you have as well? Your army is uh, ground based. It's like a lot of Stalkers, some Colossus, Archon, and stuff like that. If you had both, uh, like two High Templars and like three Disruptors, what do you think the priority would be there? Oh, uh, good question. I don't know. I think I uh, want to say the Disruptors because yeah, that, they can it is do disruptor. more like. Yeah. Storm against roaches exactly. is effective, but it's not as effective as the disruptor shot is. You want to use whatever is more effective in the situation. So, yeah, the disruptor mm -hmm. definitely would be more effective here. But then if he had, like, let's say his composition was not Roach Hydra. Instead, it was, like, fucking Mutalisk. Like, Mutalisk is Zergling. Right. And you had Disruptor still from earlier because maybe he went for, like, a lot of roaches early. And then he switched into Mutaling. Mm -hmm. And now you have Disruptor and Templar. Then I would say, mm -hmm. well, now your priority should be the Templar, not the disruptor. Gotcha. And then you just literally could just add in like a abomination control group of group one it has everything, and then group three or group two, whatever you want to put it in, is your priority AOE, which now would be your Templar against like Mutaling. Gotcha, that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's you know it's funny because I just coming into Wings of Liberty in the past few months, like I don't use F two ever, which I think is probably a good that's good yeah. habit. You to, did definitely yeah. not. If you want to start <laughs> microing, you don't want to be in the habit of using F two. Like, yeah. I, I think it's okay for Diamond, but once you get to, like, Masters, you kind of want to get out of the habit of using it as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Cool. Now, I know we're running out of time a bit here, so... Yeah, um, but I was, we we're going to kind of just speed it up. Because, like you said, I think the game's going to end here, but you kind of threw everything away. Yeah. So that is kind of the game there. Like, you should die. So, I mean, I, I rebuild, but, like, at the end of the day, I'm just... I lost my army, and that's pretty much a death knell for... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, like, just in general, like, if your opponent was going to take a little bit of initiative here, he would kill you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but it's, it's diamond, so everybody kind of is terrified. And I think I sent out <laughs> yeah, some... Yeah. yeah, that's a perfect word. <laughs> Everyone's terrified. Uh, that's perfect. Um, um, but yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, I, I do some harassing with my warp prism that has been from the beginning of the game. Yeah, yeah. So I just send some backstabs just to try to... But then, yeah, here's where I'm just like, I just get chewed up. And then because I see him moving in with the lurkers and I'm... Oh, yeah. Well, that's also when Disruptors would be good, too, because a Disruptor can actually yeah. outrange a Lurker. Yeah, could, then I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, like, if you had, for instance, if you had, like, just, like, Disruptors on Group 2 or whatever, you could just go to the edge mm -hmm. of, like, where you know where he is, and a Lurker's mm -hmm. range is not as much as... Like, so uh, a Lurker with full upgrades can have 10 range. Mm -hmm. A Disruptor, when you shoot it at max distance with the explosion radius, can have, like, 14 range. So you can always outrange lurkers if you know where they are. You just throw out two shots at a time. If, when it's lurkers that are burrowed, you throw two shots mm -hmm. at a time rather than one. Because it takes mm -hmm. two shots to kill a lurker, and you might AoE clump, like, kill five lurkers. 
Mm. And if you can do that like once or twice, suddenly the fight is so fucking easy for you just it's to push a big push swing. Yeah, 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 it's a big swing. And then that would be a great, like, you know, the shoppers would have been amazing in this game. Uh, so I, w I would definitely say, you know, if you're going to play robo based styles, uh, get in the habit of using them. The, you, you don't have to use them if you just go straight immortal all game. But if you want to try to go for robo bay units, get in the habit of being comfortable with using disruptors or colossus. Uh, but yeah, you, you don't have to go disruptor if you want to just go immortal. You could just go immortal mm -hmm. every time, and that would be more a movie. All right, gotcha. I'm gonna cool. make a game now, and I'll just give you the example build really fast. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and and while you're setting up the game, um, I'm gonna. Okay. Good. Sorry, I gotta just make it really. Oh, you gonna AFK or something? No, no, no. I, I think I just. I don't know what, how the party went away. Okay. I just remade it because I, I, I had to make you make me leader. I was like, this might just be faster. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Seems efficient. Oh, I, I was, yeah, I, I had alt tap. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, it's it's all good. You're all good. Uh, um, all right. And then add an AI, Protoss. All right. So this will just be the reference guide. And what I'm going to just tell me if you think this is good, and then we'll do it. I'm going to okay. give you the build that is immortal based. Or, yeah, it's an immortal Archon charge lot based after the adept pressure. Like, I'm not going to go sure. to Shepter's here. I'm not going to do that shit. Uh, no Prism either. Okay. Yeah, no, that, I'm, I'm curious. I think having sort of a framework to start with is... I, I, yeah. I, I prefer... I'm not the type to change it up all the time. I just tend to execute the same thing and try to practice more. Yeah. And you, you always could. Once you get into your fourth base, you could do whatever you want here, too. Just know that this mm -hmm. build, once you get to a four-base setup, you could do whatever you want. You could transition to Sky Toss. You could go just for... Constant pushes mm. of immortal archon, char immortal archon charge lot. You could go disruptors are there or whatever. You could go templar uh, with storm. Anything you want to do. So while you're doing the setup, quick question is: um, quick change of pace is <clears throat> if I see a twelve pool with gas, which I think usually implies um, uh, baneling bust. Like, what's the Protoss response to that? Just walling off with like gateways. You would, uh, 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 yeah, uh, basically, not, not, I wouldn't say you don't want to wall off entirely, okay? Uh, I'm mm -hmm. gonna, I'm gonna actually gonna pause this because I'm gonna totally fuck the build up when I talk about this. I, because this is a little mm -hmm. bit more technical. So, what you'd want to do if it's like a, a straight up, like one base gas all in, you mm -hmm. would make a stalker first. That's why I kind of want mm -hmm. you in the habit of making stalker first because it, it handles all in so fucking amazingly well. Okay. Uh, you make an early battery. You have the one gap in your wall where it's like, you know, the the the, the gap I'm yeah. going to show you in a second. Uh, then you just make, literally after a stalker, you can make like one, maybe two sentries. One would be fine, though. And then you just allow the Zerg to continuously push into your fucking natural over and over and over whenever he goes for his all-in timing. And you cut mm -hmm. his ass up over and over. You let the battery heal some shit. Maybe let, him, maybe let a few banelings blow up or whatever. Don't always have the idea mm -hmm. to zone everything out. Let a little mm -hmm. bit in kill it, and then zone the rest out. And if you can mm. maintain to do this over and over and over, you will overpower his all-in, like, over time. Uh, Should I supplement the sentries with adepts after the fact, because they're going to do better light damage from uh, behind the wall? Honestly, if it's a gas base all-in, I would uh, I would actually almost prefer you to go pure stalker. If, okay. you, if you knew it was a gas base all-in, because the thing is, is, if you make sentries, or sorry, if you make uh, adepts against roaches, if it's not banes, but instead now it's roaches, your adepts are going to do nothing. And the reason gotcha. why is because adepts have the same range as roaches. So the only mm -hmm. way they deal damage is, is if, if they take damage. Uh, they have gotcha. less range than ravagers. So they always could take damage from ravagers. And ravagers are also faster. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, uh, adepts, just even if they do trade damage from each other, like roaches shooting adepts and what and vice versa, adepts get the shit kicked out of them by roaches. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, stalkers would just be, and then stalkers can also handle lings like really well, especially if you're behind a wall and lings are coming one at a time, and you're able to just like throw a force field down. And all you got to do then is if you confirm, okay, yeah, no, he's like never stopping the all in. Add on a battery. Literally be like, okay, mm -hmm. add another battery, and he's still going. Add another battery. He's still going. Add another battery. And once you get to mm -hmm. a point where you have like four batteries, you just never die. Gotcha. Cool. Thanks. All right. Uh, I actually need you to resume the game now because <laughs> okay. you're a referee. Sorry. You, you could do it from menu as well if, if your keyboard isn't doing it. Yeah, where's the resume? There you go, good shit. So I sometimes have a little bit narrower of a wall, but then my fatty archons won't fit through. So this is an archon 
you know, compliant. You never like, don't ever open up with an Archon wall ever against Zerg because an Archon wall requires a double pixel opening, which is way mm -hmm. more vulnerable to all ends. You can always kill a gateway later and make an Archon friendly wall later. That's gotcha. better than creating an Archon friendly wall right away against Zerg. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right, so we are going to send out our probe. Uh, so yeah, whatever we scout, it's you know, it's it's an AI, so it's not gonna do shit. But yeah, we'll just assume it's like a normal yeah. build. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, and then I'll go back to uh, I'll build my core now. And uh, so I'm gonna do the thing I was talking about, where you just measure it off the wall like that. So now your core is suddenly mm. like perfect. It's always perfect if you do that that way, where you always do it off your initial I wall. See. So I'm using the pylon for a wall. You're now I understand. I understand. Yeah. Gotcha. Which is pretty vulnerable, admittedly. Yeah. So. And then, yeah, uh, make our second pylon. And then as soon as the second pylon's done, we'll do double chrono boost. One on the nexus, one on the gate for the stalker. You're a little low on gas. Oh, yeah, shit, shit. I had like, I think I had like a rally probe across the map or some shit. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then Chrono Boost the Gate, Chrono Boost the Nexus, and just Rally to the Natural, and we're good. Uh, now, uh, the next thing I'll build will be uh, the tech with, and this is assuming you're not getting all-in. This is assuming you're, you're uh, yeah, you know, yeah, playing yeah. with the standard. I prefer non-all-ins, per personally. Yeah. yeah. So we made the council. We're going to make... Now, what, ur what urgency should I have to kill an overlord after I drop my tech? You, know, you should, should do I it as soon as you have an adept. Like, if you can kill it right now, you can kill it now. But, uh, like, if it's, like, flying over your stalker. But if it's, like, going in your main base right now, wait till your depth pops out. Because right gotcha. now... Just to you're, keep the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're going you're gonna to do a battery right now. And you can do it, like, right there. That's, that's like, mm -hmm. with the one pack, the one gap away from the pylon. You're now also... Mm -hmm. You're going to keep making probes to, like, 34, 35. And then now you're going to make your gateways. So mm -hmm. you make gateway number one there. So now your, your wall is fully solidified. You make another mm -hmm. gateway, like, in your main base. And now if there was an overlord, you could just rotate... Like that, go kill the Overlord, and then start Chrono boosting your uh, a Glaive upgrade. So, so do do, do boost the, the Glade. Yeah, you boost okay. it twice. Boost it twice, and okay. then you make your third adept. You should have three units pop out of your gateway before the the warp gets done, with this version of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you'll be doing a five adept timing if if you go for this build. Okay, and then obviously don't try not to supply block and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then uh, uh, Chrono boost the Glaive one more time. And uh, keep your probes going. Warp gate will finish as soon as the gateways are done now. This is why you build around 34, 35 supply. So now you have all three mm. gates done with warp gate. So it's like perfectly mm -hmm. timed. And then right as you make your three adepts to go move out, you can send your soccer back if you don't have an overlord to kill. I'm uh, sorry, I, I missed this. Do I do warp gate before council or council before You do warp, warp gate? gate right as you start the soccer. So like gotcha. immediately. And now you have your five oh. adept timing. Uh, you can move out with a probe like this. Move out with a probe with the adepts. Because, again, this is mm. a single tech. So this is, mm. And it's also three gate, so it's a really fast third. So you can okay. shade your adepts like that and move to your third. A, move your third just to clear it. It's clear. Right. And then now you go like you yeah. just build your nexus. Uh, and nice. you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you do this and you progress it from there. Once you mm. do this and you move out, you can try and move your adepts and use them. Go back to your main, though, while they're going across the map. Build a robo. And... Uh, you know, so you can start charge as well. This is also when I would say make a couple sentries and also start your gas at your natural. Mm -hmm. um, so now no more sentries. You're done with sentries. Now you mm -hmm. have the choice with your adepts to go, am I going to make stalkers if it's a lot of roaches or can I just get by making zealots and just be okay mm -hmm. if it's, you know, a greedy zerg or if it's a zergling based zerg. Uh, mm -hmm. and, then you're, and then you're good to go. And then keep All you do is you keep making uh, your, you know, your your shit so let's just assume we would have attacked there and whatever happens sure, happens sure, yeah, yeah. uh and then now with your third base you just connect your, your wall with like some gates and shit or i fucked it up go from the wall first so you can be like gate gate and then your last gate could be like on the edge of the nexus like that just to fully cover mm -hmm. it so there's no gap mm -hmm. and then uh send your probes down from the natural to your third nexus finishing mm -hmm. so now we are gonna have open supply again and now we start chrono boosting our immortals Charge is almost mm -hmm. done, and we're going into Zealots now. We can take our gases at our third base, and we can now also, because we're, our gas is starting to explode, we can add in two buildings at the same time for tech. We can add in a mm. Temple Archives, and we can also add in a Forge for upgrades. Okay. 
So forge after the third established. Yeah, you definitely don't want to take it before because it's too early. It's way too early. It's just going to slow everything gotcha. down. And you're not gotcha. going to go for a timing anyways. You're playing defensive. So mm -hmm. it makes no sense to rush upgrades like as quick as possible. And so now, when do, or do I want to... When do I want to attack the Zerg at this point? And once you do damage with your with your shit, if you saw and like if you're like, wow, I really did some fucking damage to him, you could just power off of three bases and just go for it. But if you're like, mm -hmm. oh no, I didn't, the Zerg's definitely not just gonna die now. Like he definitely has potential to be pretty strong here still, uh, and you you still find him intimidating. Do not rush at timing. Just sit mm -hmm. back and just max out. Literally, just max, because that, that's gonna be in your favor because you're going for eighty probes. If 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 you go to 80 probes, you should just max. You gotcha. can cut early okay. though on like 66 probes, all three base saturation. If the if you fuck the Zerg up, it's really a judgment call. And, understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, obviously, I suspect during this time, you would be hallucinating, scouting, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like once uh, every like minute or so. Once every minute. Okay. Yeah. About. And then, like, do I replace entries if? No, nope, uh, you do not. No, you do not. Okay. You only make them once, and you're you're good for life, basically. Gotcha. And then, okay, cool. And then, yeah. So then, at that point, I'm I'm gonna max off a four base, and then if I see their comp has like heavy roach, I mix in some disruptors, you know, or if it's heavy ling bangling, yeah. I mix in storm just yeah. to deal with the crowd control. I would I would say yeah, exactly. I would say too, add in a second robo. As well, when you start your uh, your fourth base, fourth, yeah. Okay. Oh. So, because like your money at this point is gonna really be exploding. Like we're basically at that mm -hmm. saturation we're looking for right now, and mm -hmm. you're you're not gonna have enough money to, or you're gonna have too much money to spend. You're not gonna have enough production. And then once, and, and what are my warp ins largely? Are my warp well, like, your like warp ins should just be between like after the century phase. If you don't need stalker, then that's great. But it should just become uh, uh, zealots and archons. That's it. All the time. Zealot gotcha. Archon. Zealot, just rotate between Zealot Archon. Because you're going Charge Archon and Mortal the whole time. And, ju and just keep them on CD all the, all the time, right? Just like constantly warping in? Yes. like m As much as you can, warp in, warp in. This is why we're not exploding gates yet. Uh, mm -hmm. And once your fourth is done saturating and you have like 80 plus probes, if you go, like, you know, if you do what I did where you go to 84, that's that's fine. Now, mm -hmm. you could add on like an extra like six gates at this point. Literally. Because now gotcha. you're going you're gonna to explode to like the 12 gate mark of like yeah, two yeah, Robo 12 gate we it. talked about. Yeah, you want to kind of instant remax if you lose a big chunk of it. So. Yeah, and you're also making a composition that's very able to maintain where you can make all of your gas or all of your minerals based off of Archons or Charge Lots. Gotcha. And now from here, I would say take another base. This is when you would want to take a fifth base because your main base is mining out and you need to send them somewhere. So mm -hmm. taking another base would be great. This would also be a great time against Zerg specifically to do shit like this. Go to like your third, add on a cannon. Go to your main, add on a cannon, and now add on a battery. Go to your natural, add mm -hmm. on a cannon and a battery. Go to your uh, your fourth base, add on a cannon because you already have a battery there. Go to your fifth base, add on a cannon and a battery. Like one cannon, one battery in every base. And you're going to notice you're going to spend all your money doing this, so you can just spend your gas now on Archon mm -hmm. rounds while you do this. Right. Okay. And this is going to be huge at keeping you safe from run buys and also like little run buys that buys you time for warp ins and mutalisk fly buys. That keep buys you time right. for warp ins. Makes sense. Okay, cool. And now we have a fucking fat ass, like like super strong pre ten minute max of Archon Immortal Charge Lot, which has a good amount of Archons and a good amount of uh, Immortals. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, now you're going to be doing also, like if you do this, I would say uh, like a good timing. Uh, you'll have a plus two damage window to hit this with as well. Because you can see our plus two weapons is just about to finish. Oh, it got actually, mm -hmm. the AI actually fucking contaminated it. So, okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's fucking great. Uh, but yeah, no, this would be like a super sick timing to hit. And then from here, this is that point when I said you could do anything. You could go gotcha. Sky Toss here. You could go just constant remaxes of this army. You could go for uh, like uh, more robos and go into heavier amounts of like another robo to go three robo immortals. Or whatever the fuck you want to do here, you could do it. But this is like the, the initial... The setup, and if you could handle this, this build, is the base. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is sort of the, the base. You okay. could also gotcha. turn this build into things that are more harassive early, like what you did earlier with the prism in the game you showed me. And if you get good at that, mm -hmm. then like that could become your opener into this. But mm -hmm. if you could just handle this, your Protoss is going to feel solid as fucking Zerg all the way to high masters. Like, I, I honestly think I could do this build in GM and win games in GM with this build right now. Cool. Now, this, this, this is good. I like a good sort of, you know. 
baseline, and then I can tweak it as yeah. needed as I. But iterating right, on this, I think, feels like a good plan. <laughs> so yeah, go for this. Uh, have this be your quota, and uh, yeah, man, I I feel like awesome. The sky is the limit, dude. It's it's gonna go. You're gonna go places. Cool. Thanks. I I know we went a little over, so I appreciate that. Yeah, it's all good, man. Uh, yeah, but much love. Do you have any final questions before we call it? Uh, I think not at this point. I mean, I think uh, I think it's just up to me to to kind of, like I said, just get some reps in, and then I'll probably, depending on how that goes, I can do a follow up session. Okay. Depending it from that point, it's right. sort of how I. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, man. All right. Sounds good, dude. Uh, catch you like catch you next time, and uh, yo, good luck. Uh, yeah. And yeah, take it easy, man. Cheers, man. Thanks. See Later. you. Bye. All right, guys. There you go. Boom. Coach lesson done again. Coach lesson done again. Boom. Done again. Boom. 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 <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helps you out as well. If you're Protoss and you want to know how to fudge Zerg over hard. Uh, but yeah, go check out more videos. As I always say, if you guys want to see more, there's lots more content out there on my, on my YouTube channel with coaching Bronze GM stuff, replay analysis stuff. It's all stuff that you can learn with with every race as well. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Good luck. And see you next time. Peace, guys.